Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. On this video I am going to be giving you the talking points from our 3-1 defeat to Crystal Palace yesterday evening. So one of the talking points was VAR controversy. Now obviously Crystal Palace's second goal obviously was from a penalty. But the penalty had been given from a handball by Victor Lindelof. Now, Solskjaer disagrees with it. You know, he doesn't think it was a penalty, so he thinks it was the wrong decision. Uh, Gary Neville also thought it was the wrong decision. Obviously, Jordan Ayew had took the first penalty, but obviously, you know, it had to be retaken. Um, another one of the talking points was three of our players had got awards uh, ahead of kickoff, and that was Bruno Fernandez. He got the Samat Busby Player of the Year. Anthony Martial he got the Players Player of the Year award, and Marcus Rashford got a goal of the season. You know that goal he scored against Chelsea in the cup, was it? last October when we beat in Chelsea by two goals to one. <coughs> now, another one of the talking points was uh, Donny van der Beek uh, coming off the bench and scoring on his Premier League debut. I thought, to be honest with you, he did make a fantastic impact and I can't understand why Donny van der Beek didn't start the game. Obviously, we got Donny van der Beek in a deal worth £40 million. I think we paid, was it 34 £35 million up front with the rest of it in add-ons. And Donny van der Beek signed a five-year contract with Manchester United to keep at the club until 2025. And there's also an option of a further year. I think another one of the talking points were Wilfred Zaha getting a brace, you know, it's, you know, scoring twice against his former club. Um, you know, Wilfred Zaha had um, a very, very good game for Crystal Palace. I think another one of the talking points was our midfield balance because we didn't look, look so good in that midfield. Uh, Paul Popper, like I mentioned on my match reaction and my play ratings, I thought Paul Popper had a good few opportunities uh, I think he had like, was it two or three shots from outside the box? But I just think he gave the ball away far too much, did Paul Popper. Um, I don't think Scott McTominway was too good either. Uh, weren't good in possession with Scott McTominway. Uh, Bruno Fernandes, you know, he weren't at his best again. He, uh, he had a few block shots in the game. Uh, another one of the talking points was our defence defensively a shambles, really, really was. You know, Lindelof, I thought, was probably the worst player on the pitch. Like I said, gave the penalty away. Also was accountable for Andros Townsend's first goal. Um, he was also out of position for Wilfred Zaha's third goal was Victor Lindelof. And I don't think Harry Maguire was too good either because, you know, he gave the ball away several times. He didn't get forward much either. Uh, Luke Shaw... Um, he lacked that attacking intent and he was also accountable for Andros Townsend's first goal. And also another one of the talking points was Solskjaer's uh, decision making. Because I think his decision making is quite poor. Uh, why did Solskjaer start Fossum Mensa at right back instead of Anwan Bissaka? You know, Matic obviously you know, wasn't involved in the game. Uh, he put Daniel James on the right and on the right wing instead of Mason Greenwood. You know why didn't he start Mason Greenwood over Daniel James? Um, obviously David De Gea was in goal. Uh, like I said, I think he's going to remain our number one goalkeeper for this season. Well, at least for the start of this season, he will remain our number one. But I've said, you know, Solskjaer needs to put Dean Henderson as number one because I think Dean Henderson is now reliable enough to become our number one goalkeeper. You know, he has now got that experience behind him. You know, because he recently enjoyed two successful loans with Sheffield United. 
And, you know, Dean Henderson's been part of the club for several years. You know, we got him at the age of 14. The other week, he signed a six-year contract with Man United worth 120 grand a week. De Gea uh, didn't do so bad yesterday, though, to be fair. You know, he did make a couple of saves, but I thought his distribution was quite poor, like I mentioned on my uh, player ratings. And obviously did well to keep Jordan Iowa's first penalty out. But, you know, this season is David De Gea's 10th season at Manchester United. Um, obviously, he's enjoyed, you know, around nine years at the football club. But I think he's had like seven good years as David De Gea because in the last couple of years, he has been a liability reflecting on the calamitous mistakes he has made. So they are the talking points from the game. Crystal Palace. For the first time in their history, they have won their first two league games in the top flight. And it's obviously the second season in a row that Crystal Palace have beaten us at Old Trafford in, in the league. Because obviously, you know, last season they beaten us at Old Trafford by two goals to one. But Palace, you know, deserved the win. And, you know, Solskjaer gave his perception on the game. And, you know, he admits that Manchester United are not good enough. Uh, Patrice Evra also believes that Solskjaer is protecting his players too much. But let's put into the equation, Crystal Palace had injuries. Like I mentioned, you know, they had Christian Benteke out, they had Conor Wickham out, they also had Scott Dan out, James Tonkins, Gary Cahill... They had a few others as well. Uh, Patrick Van Antel, he was also out. Nathan Ferguson was also out for injury. And Sacco has just come back from injury from for Crystal Palace. Now, Roy Hodgson has beaten Ole Gunnar Solskjaer now twice as a manager. I'm surprised that Roy Hodgson is still managing. You know, Roy Hodgson is now in his 70s. Um, he's managed around 16 clubs in his managerial career. Obviously, can't remember every single club that he has managed. But bad start to the season for Manchester United. You know, losing yesterday 3-1 to Palace. Uh, obviously, lost to Aston Villa by one goal to nil in pre-season. You know. And I did say, didn't I, you know, this season is big for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Manchester United because obviously, you know, this season is his second full season at the football club. And Solskjaer knows that he's got to exceed his expectations this season if he is to remain Manchester United manager. And I said to you, didn't I, on one of my recent videos, what will represent a good season for Manchester United? And that's finishing in the top two or the top three. You know, and reflect on that performance yesterday. Obviously, that's not going to happen. Um, also, to winning the trophy this season would represent a good season. It's very imperative that we win some silverware this season because we've not yet won out in terms of silverware under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era. And we haven't won a trophy for over three years. And this is the first time this has happened in just over 30 years. But, you know, Solskjaer was saying that, you know, we had confidence going on into this season, you know, from where we left off last season. Because prior to this game against Palace, you know, we was unbeaten in our last 14 league games. And last season, you know, we did exceed most of our expectations. We obviously got qualification for the Champions League. We also finished third and we progressed to three semi-finals. We got to the FA Cup semi-final, the Europa League semi-final, and we also got to the... Uh, EFL Cup semi-final. The only expectation we didn't exceed last season was winning a trophy. So last season was Solskjaer's first full season at the football club. But I ho I'm hopeful that uh, the first part of this season isn't going to replicate the first part of last season because at the first part of last season, we enjoyed our worst start ever to a Premier League season. And at that point, Solskjaer was very, very close to getting sacked as Manchester United manager. But I give you the main explanations why he did not get sacked. Now, 
if Manchester United don't make any more signings in this summer transfer window, I don't even think we're going to challenge for the Premier League title this season because I think we need at least a couple of more signings to challenge for the Premier League title. And Solskjaer recently named the five players that can help Manchester United challenge for the title. And he mentioned Dean Henderson, Eric Bay, Paul Popper, Donny van der Beek and Bruno Fernandes. We are at least three years off winning the Premier League title. But, you know, maybe there is some Manchester United fans, you know, demanding Ole Gunnar Solskjaer out now. Um, I'm not one of those fans at the moment. You know, we've got to delve into the season a bit more to see how it goes from here. You know, then I'll have more of a perception on Solskjaer. Now, if we do continue losing games or drawing and we're not winning games, then I probably will demand Solskjaer to be sacked. But I always said they needed another season because it is a transition period and it has been a transition period for a while. Like I mentioned, when Solskjaer first came into the football club, he was inheriting a squad that was worth £700 odd million pounds before he obviously made his signings. Um, obviously, Solskjaer has made signings at the club. You know, he spent over £200 million. Pounds. Last summer, he brought Daniel James, Anwan Bissaka and Harry Maguire in. And in January, he brought Bruno Fernandes and he brought Odina Gallo in. Recently, brought Donny van der Beek in. And he's also brought a few academy players into the football club. But actually, the vast majority of his team is Jose Mourinho. Still a few players here from the Van Gaal era. Still one player here from the Moyes era. And still a few pl players here from the Sir Alex Ferguson era. Um, I think, you know, Solskjaer is partly to blame for our downfall and I think Woodward and the Glazers are also to blame for our downfall. The vast majority of the blame does actually stem from the board because the Ed Woodward and the Glazers are not spending money and Manchester United fans are demanding Woodward and the Glazers to, be, to spend money. But I just feel as though that Solskjaer isn't getting backed enough as Manchester United manager. And I think he does deserve more backing. I think all the managers that we've had since Alex Ferguson's retirement have not been backed enough. And this is why our recruitment policy has been so poor for several years. And, you know, Solskjaer's obviously publicly admitted that Manchester United have got to spend money in this summer transfer window if we are to compete with the likes of City, Liverpool and now perhaps Chelsea. You know, we have only made one signing so far in this summer transfer window and we're missing out on all our ta missing out on a lot of our targets. You know, we missed out on Erling Haaland in January. We also missed out on Jude Bellingham. Uh, we also have missed out on Jack Grealish because he recently signed a five-year contract with Aston Villa. We also missed out on Sergio Reguilon. He's gone to Tottenham, but at one point it was looking very imminent we was going to get Sergio Reguilon in. We also missed out on uh, Gareth Bale. You know, he's uh, gone back to Tottenham. You know, look at the amount of players that Manchester United are missing out on. Another one of my element of concerns is that there is teams around us that are recruit doing very, very good recruitment. You know, Chelsea, they've made very, very good signings. Uh, Liverpool, they've made some good signings. Tottenham, they've made some good signings. Arsenal, they've made a couple of good signings. Even Leeds United, you know, they've made some good signings. You know, Everton, they've also made some good signings. But, you know, this summer transfer window is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's fourth transfer window as Manchester United manager. And it's, is it around three weeks or just under three weeks left now until the summer transfer window shuts? And... You know, Man United have got quite a lot to do. You know, we're not only obviously going to focus on the incomings, we're also, we've also got to focus on the outgoings as well because we've got to get rid of players in this summer transfer window and we are struggling to offload our fringe players at the moment and I said it's very imperative that we do sell players in this summer transfer window because we'll generate money and it will help us with our rebuilding process. And quite frankly, there is still Deadwood at the football club. You know what I mean? So, Man United still got quite a lot to do. Uh, we've obviously got to try and get a right winner in. Uh, I think it would be very beneficial if Manchester United could get a left-back in. 
Uh, we have got two predominant left backs in the team at the moment, and that's Luke Shaw and Brandon Williams. Uh, Luke Shaw's our first choice left back, but my element of concern about Luke Shaw is that he's injury prone, and Brandon Williams is our backup left back, but he's not experienced enough yet, so he needs to gain a bit more experience behind him. Um, we need, we do need a centre half. We really, really do need someone to go alongside Harry Maguire. Lindelof's obviously too inconsistent. Uh, Bay's good, but he's too injury prone, and we've obviously got likes of Smalling. Jones and Rojo, who are our backups, but it's very likely that they're going to be leaving Manchester United um, at some point, probably will be in this summer transfer window. Alex Tuanzebe, he's obviously not out with injury at the moment. He's another one of our backup centre-halves. So, yeah. But we have got to uh, see improvements at Manchester United. You know, there's definitely players that have got to improve and Solskjaer has called on our players to improve. I think definitely his decision-making's got to improve. You know, there's still aspects of our game that have also got to improve. Really, really is. You know, don't get me wrong, I've seen improvements since Solskjaer came into the club and that, you know, he's brought some good players in so far. He's also got rid of a lot of the deadwood since he got recommended into Man United. We've seen players like Sanchez leave, Lukaku, Herrera, Fellaini, Damian, Valencia, Ashley Young, uh, Angel Gomez. We've also loaned a few young players out. You know, don't forget we loaned Sahif Chon out to Werder Bremen. Uh, Dylan Levitt went out on loan to Charlton. I heard that James Garner has gone out on loan to Watford. And I think we loaned Joe Pereira out again for another season. To be fair, I like the way Solskjaer has promoted the youth. Um, because since Ole Gunnar Solskjaer took over the reins at Manchester United in December 2018, he's had a habit of developing young de developing young homegrown talents. And we've got a lot of good young players coming through at Man United. You know, we've obviously got that Hannah Bell Medjbray. Uh, just got into the senior squad recently. We've got Ethan Laird. He got promoted into the senior squad not so long ago. Uh, Ethan Galfbraith. I think he also got promoted into the senior squad not so long ago. Um, yeah, so, you know, we have got quite a few um, young players. But it's set a challenge for our, for our academy players to replicate the likes of Mason Greenwood and, you know, Brandon Williams. Mm -hmm. Uh, Manchester United's next game is Luton in the Carabao Cup third round. And I do believe in that game, Solskjaer will be making rotation. Because it is only against Luton. Uh, Luton are the championship. But this is going to be the 40th meeting between Manchester United and Luton in total. But it's going to be the first time Man United and Luton are going to be meeting since 1992 and it is at Kennelsworth it is at Kennelsworth Road I think it's called Kennelsworth Road is Luton Stadium Luton did beat Reading in the previous round was it by one goal to nil if I am correct uh, their current manager is Nathan Jones um, is that, this is his second spell now with Luton by the way uh, before, he was obviously at Stoke, and I think he was once a caretaker manager of Brighton, was Nathan Jones. Oh, like I said, we progressed to the Cowboy Cup semi-finals last season, got knocked out by City. Uh, we haven't won the League Cup since 2017, you know, we did win it under the Jose Mourinho era, you know, we did win the League Cup on four occasions under the Sir Alex Ferguson era. Preview for the Luton Man United game will be coming up. It should be uh, later on today or it will be tomorrow morning at the latest. I presume as well Solskjaer will be doing a press conference for that game. Our second league game is Brighton. and So that's another game Manchester United should win. So it's very, very imperative that we do get back to winning ways. It really, really is. As I said to you, um, if things... Uh, 
continue going on now from this, you know, 3 1 defeat to Palace, then more pressure will be on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and then probably could end up getting sacked as Manchester United manager. Um, if we was to sack Solskjaer, you know, who should come in to replace him? But I said, you know, it wouldn't really solve much, you know, if we did decide to sack Solskjaer. But if we were to turn things around and, you know, then possibly, you know, then we will start to believe Solskjaer, you know, the right manager and all of that. But we shall see. Don't forget, Solskjaer is our fourth permanent manager since the Ferguson era. We have sat three managers since the Ferguson era. You know, we sat David Moyes. He endured eight or nine months at the club. Should have never appointed him in any way. Obviously, hasn't got a good, hasn't got any uh, good pedigree whatsoever. It was Ferguson at the fault for ever recommending David Moyes in. Uh, Moyes only lasted, like I said, eight or nine months. Uh, brought two players in. That was for learning in one matter. Uh, Louis van Gaal. He got sacked after two years despite winning the FA Cup. Uh, Louis van Gaal brought around 16 players into the football club. He brought the likes of Snyderlin, Sebastian Schweinsteiger, Di Maria, Falcao, Memphis Depay, Blind, Rojo, Damian, Marcel, Shaw, Romero, Herrera. I think we also brought Victor Valdez in under Louis van Gaal. But the vast majority of the players van Gaal brought in have now left anyway. And Mourinho, he got sacked after two and a half years despite winning the Europa League and the League Cup in his first season at Manchester United and obviously recommended 11 players in to the football club. You know, but in the last seven years, we have spent close to the billion pound range on players. But like I've said on my recent videos, I think, you know, Solskjaer is in a similar situation to what Jose Mourinho was in because Jose Mourinho made it clear to our board in the summer of 2018 that he wanted to get a centre-half in. Mourinho obviously never got that centre-half in, did he? So that's one of the main explanations why his man jail tenure didn't work out. But Mourinho also had bad disputes with our board and he had obviously bad disputes with our top players and all of that. You know, but definitely uh, Solskjaer's got to book his ideas up, you know. Like I said, when he first came into Manchester United, he did really, really well. Uh, this is when he was interim manager, of course, and that's why he got the job permanently, Solskjaer, you know, reflecting on what he did when he was the, when he was the interim manager and that. Uh, we also went on a 19-game unbeaten run in all competitions until Chelsea had beaten us in the FA Cup semi-final. Solskjaer says he wants Manchester United to make another two or three signings and the two players now Solskjaer's trying to sign is Alex Tells from Porto and Jadon Sancho from Borussia Dortmund. So they are now his priorities. Uh, you know the news on Alex Tells. Uh, Mohamed Boatsi from RMC Sport recently said that Alex Tells has agreed a five-year contract with Manchester United. Also to uh, Fabrizio Romano said that he's considering leaving Porto is Alex Tells. Uh, Porto, I think, do want around £18 million or just over £18 million pounds for the player, but, you know, that is a cheap solution. But I heard that we're not willing to pay what Porto want. You know, his agent was in Manchester not so long ago to thrash out a deal for his client to join Manchester United. Uh, and you know, obviously, know the news already on Jaden Sancho. So, anyway, right, guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel if you do consider subscribe as always. And take care, God bless, and I'll see you all again very, very soon.